Shalom, my friends. Wonderful to be with you. We have an astonishing story for you today. Listen to that. A 2,600 years old seal bearing a Hebrew name was uncovered in dirt near the Western world. This is the first time this kind of archaeological discovery has been made in Yerushalayim. This is what the archaeologist Eli Shuron is saying. The seal is inscribed with the name of Ade Yahu Asher Al Abayit, which means Ade Yahu by appointment of the house. This is the most prominent role in the king's court in the kingdom of Judah that appear for the first time on the list of the ministry of the King Solomon. This is just amazing. So Doron Spielman, he's the vice president of the City of David Foundation. This is what he said. This tiny bulla has immense meaning to billions of people worldwide. Why? Because this personal signet of a senior official to a biblical king was from the first temple period. This is another link to a long chain of Jewish history in Jerusalem. And you know, when I, reading, when I was reading this article, I thought, hey, this reminds me Isaiah 52, where it's written, shake yourself from the dust, rise up and sit on your throne near Rishalayim. And it's exactly what's happening. From the dust, they took it, put it in water, find this thing, which was in the hand of the most senior person who was next to the king, uh, king of Judah or king of, of, uh, of Israel. So we are touching his story. It's just amazing. And again, it's like, is Yerushalayim coming out of the dust? Today we have a great friend here, and she came already for different programs. Rivka, thank you, Rivka, for coming. My pleasure. It's wonderful to have you. So Rivka is a writer, and she's an adult Jewish educator with a special interest in Geula. Do you remember Geula? We said last time is redemption. We spoke already about it. We spoke about Aliyah. We spoke about the blooming of the land. But today we want to speak a bit more about the Torah awakening. Uh, she was raised and born and raised in New York. She moved to South Florida. Then she went to do uh, to study in the University of Maryland. She earned a bachelor's and master and PhD. She lived also in Baltimore with her husband, who was a rabbi over there. And now they met Aliyah in 2010. They have children here in Israel, in the land of Israel, I like to say it like that, and also in the state. And it's going, it's going to be really a, a brilliant program. We are touching this um, Geula subject, that we say this redemption subject about the Torah, of the awakening of the Torah. So Rivka, Again, thank you for coming. My pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. And tell us, what was the step for you to arrive at this place, singing Geula is important, and the Torah awakening is important? What, what was your background to arrive to this place? So I became interested. I was born Jewish, but became interested in Judaism really as a young adult. And I went through a few different phases of uh, a certain topic related to the Torah that just fascinating me for many years. So the first one was the intersection of women and Judaism and the role of women in Judaism. And I, I was involved in that for about eight or nine years. And then I started getting interested in everything that had to do with Israel. And um, that also lasted a very long time. But connected to that, the Jewish people's return to Israel that the Bible speaks about is part of a larger process of redemption. And so once I got to Israel, then then the whole issue of all of the things that we see on a regular basis that you and I have spoken about many times that's happening in the land of Israel that is pointing us more and more clearly to the fact that we are in the time period that the rabbi spoke about, that the Bible speaks about. We are in the, the lengthy process of the end of days, but we're, we're mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle of that process. I used to think that this was kind of a Jewish concern exclusively. And then I started writing stories about redemption, about Geula, news stories for Breaking Israel News, which is a division of Israel 365. And as a result of that, the people who were reading my stories, who are by and large from the Christian world, started contacting me because they are very connected to Israel and connected to the Bible. And they come to Israel very often and they wanted to meet in person. So that was fine. So they would come and they would tell me their spiritual journeys and they started telling me things like that they studied the Torah. And I, 
as a Jewish person, initially, this was going back a few years, I didn't even understand. Like, what do you mean? The Torah belongs to the Jewish people. What are you doing studying Torah? So they knew the word Parsha. They knew the idea that the, we divide the Torah into, into weekly portions that are read by all over the world, the same weekly portion in every synagogue all over the world. And, and studying that is a very big thing in the Jewish community. Anyway, that's how, by meeting people who were having coming from the non-Jewish world, by and large from the Christian world, who started telling me that they are engaged in Torah study, that really opened my eyes. And um, so I started as a journalist. I wanted to create um, for people a portrait of what is going on. And that's when I published 10 from the Nations, mm -hmm. which you have a copy of. Mm -hmm. And I subtitled it Torah Awakening Among Non-Jews. And it's it was fascinating to me as a Jewish person to find out what's going on out there um, and the fact that Christians are engaged in, in Torah study. Is that enough of an answer? Do you want me to go yeah, on? Yeah, okay. no, 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 this okay. is very good. Now, when we speak about Torah awakening movement, the name Torah, can we define that a bit? Because I know that as a, as a Christian, like in the background of the Christian, very often when we read the Bible, is written low. And when I started to discover all these things, and when I started to read the Hebrew, I'm like, this is not low, this is Torah. Oh, but this is like, it means something very differently. And again, we are battling, and uh, we are battling against anti-Semitism. And when it's written low, it's very negative, I would say, most of the time. And it's like, a lot of Christians say, we don't need the law anymore. Well, we don't need the law anymore, but you see, we need the law of gravity. We need the law of all these laws. It's what God has given us to be able to live the proper way. Tomorrow when I get up, I put my feet on the floor, not in the ceiling, because there is a law of gravity. Do you understand what I, I mean? I do understand. The word Torah is, a, is applied in so many different contexts. To a Jewish person, in the narrowest way, Torah means the first five books of Moses. Okay, but it, it's also Jews use Torah for any kind of sacred study. But we understand that the first five books of Moses are literally God's words, and it includes each of the commandments that God gave to the Jewish people and the commandments that God gave to the non, the Ten Commandments that, that God gave to the non Jewish people and the seven. Um, what we call the Sheva Mitzvot B'nai Noach, the seven, the Noahide laws, all encompassed in the first five books. But to a Jewish person, Torah is the entirety of every... Instruction? Instruction? All of the instruction, all mm -hmm. of the godly instruction, the God-inspired mm -hmm. instruction that starts from the Bible, continues into the rabbinic tradition, and all of the commentary on all of that until today. Mm -hmm. So if I were to write a book today about... Um, my my understanding of let's say a certain book in the bible or a certain passage in the bible that would add to the treasury that we call torah mm -hmm. so it means something narrow and something everything that is divinely inspired that that jews are engaged with is also properly called mm -hmm. torah so wow, to call it the law is such a diminishment yes, of the I concept know, i know so this is very interesting to know that the torah is like because like it's not just like the first five books, but it's more than that. This is interesting to know. Um, what I like also, we're doing some studies with Martin and we could hear that Morasha, which means inheritance for the Jewish people is the land of Israel, but is also the Torah. So you had an inheritance that God has given you, which is like a lot of responsibility in one way, a privilege and a responsibility. And so you have the land and now you are back also here with the Torah. And like I love this beautiful passage in Isaiah 2, where he said, let me try to say it in Hebrew because I love it. I know you know it. Um, I need to find it. While you're looking, can I say something? Mm -hmm. I learned this very deep idea that on the surface is very simple, but that there's a four part structure. It's God, it's the Jewish people, it's the land of Israel, and it's the Torah. And any one of them 
if you're missing any one of those components, you don't have the whole package. Mm -hmm. it, in some senses, since we came back to Israel, my family specifically in 2010, Torah is so much deeper when it's experienced in the land. It's, it's, it's like peanut butter and jelly, you know, like it's made to go together. And yes, you can study Torah outside of the land, but we have a tradition from our rabbis that just breathing in the land of Israel mm -hmm. makes you wise. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? We I spoke think, about it last time. Did you know? we? Yeah, we So did. I think what it means from, from a Torah perspective mm -hmm. is that the Torah somehow can come into you more easily when you're here. Something, something opens up in a person when they are in the land and to study Torah in the land of Israel is like the supreme... Um, to the supreme experience mm -hmm. of it, I, as it totally, goes together, it's made yeah, to go together. Yeah, which is like in Isaiah 2, where he said, uh, Ki mitzion titzi Torah, and ve devar Yehovah mi Yerushalayim. So again, so we say it in, in, uh, in English, it's for the Torah will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So you see like here, in most of our, English translation, it will be written the law. And it's like restricting it, yeah. it's restric restricting it. And not only that, it's like a bad, uh, bad taste, I would say. And so I'm fighting that all the time when I say, no, this is the Torah, it's much bigger. And it's like the instruction that God wants to give us. And as you say, it's, not, it's like what was written based on life so he's bringing seed in us all the time. And he's like, like having more books is like there is, you are building something from generation to generation. And I think it's something that um, we are missing really in the Christian world. And it's just amazing to see that what's happening now, it, like you said, is the word that like people are hungry. There right. is something that's happening. Right from the book of Amos, Amos, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I want to say that the Jews got the Torah on Mount Sinai from God approximately 3,300 years ago. And for much, at least of the last 2,000 years, Torah has been really an exclusively Jewish preoccupation. So it is a mitzvah, it's a commandment from God to be engaged in the words of Torah. There's a blessing that we make every morning that we, we thank God for giving us this, um, this requirement to immerse ourselves in the words of Torah. What is different now is that the, the people from the nations are beginning to turn to the Jewish people and say, I want to understand what you've been studying for 2,000 mm -hmm. years because mm -hmm. it's different than the way that I understand it. And when you talked about Kimetzion Teitzei Torah, the idea that I wanted to mention about that is in the future, we're already almost there. Like some yes, people I say, was going, yeah. <laughs> when you say in the future, it's like, well, we are. Right. Yeah. So the, depending on who you ask, people mm -hmm. say that either um, very nearly half of the Jewish people that are alive in the world today already live in the land. So the what we call mm -hmm. Kibbutz Golios, the... Um, the, I don't know how to regather. Thank you. The, the yes. regathering of the exiles. Mm -hmm. We're clearly seeing that process. Mm -hmm. So if the Torah, if the Jews are already in Israel, this is where the nations come in, in this verse, the way that I read it. If, if the Torah is going forth from Zion, but the Jews are already in Zion, who's it going forth to? It has to be mm -hmm. to the nations, to the rest of mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. and the word of God from Jerusalem. So we know you know, where, where we're sitting now, the holiday of Sukkot is coming up, and we know that the holiday of Sukkot is a, has a universalist element, as does Rosh Hashanah, but we know that... The nations are coming. The, the nations come to Israel mm -hmm. specifically on Sukkot, and what is, what is interesting, we have a couple of things going on. So for basically the 2,000 years, we had the Jews with their noses in the books, studying and so forth, and the Christian world was developing its own thing. Something is different now, and the one of the things I heard that I think is really fascinating is that when Torah books started to become translated into English and available easily online, mm -hmm. some Jewish websites that sell Jewish books in English, 
report that up to 40% of their sales are to non-Jews, okay? Um, Which and is a lot. That's a lot. Well, mm -hmm. there's a lot more of you than there are of us. So yes. there's a, it's a bigger customer base. Yeah. But it's also, it, it means that there's a market. That means people want this information. What's happening in Israel now is there's a, a, a set of Jewish people, including myself, who are beginning to respond in various ways. We're, be, we're noticing. We're no, not only that, that Christians are buying Jewish Bibles, the, the Israel Bible that is sitting here that was translated with commentary that was specifically mm -hmm. designed mm -hmm. both for Jews and non-Jews to study the Bible in this, from the same text. There are now programs that are designed for the Christian market from Torah Jews. So for example, the sort of the granddaddy of them is rootsource.com, which started maybe only five, 10, year, ten oh. year, somewhere between five and 10 years yeah. ago. It isn't that long. Mm -hmm. And their whole idea is that Jews in Israel are teaching Torah to Christians worldwide, and they use an online format for rootsource.com. There's yeshivafornations.com, which also offers um, a yeshiva is a school for advanced Torah study that has up until now been only for Jews, but is a place where specifically all of the Torah teaching is presented in a way that understands that the, um, that the student is not Jewish and is coming from a different background. Then we have... You know, I'm, I'm just stopping you just for a minute. You know, when you see that, you know, we were speaking about the books and I was thinking, when you start to buy Jewish books, like Martin and me, we, we, we did that, is like there is something in it that you want more. So you, you go in the library and you go in the Jewish library and you look at all these books and say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. Right. And, and there is a thirst. There is really a thirst in our soul saying, okay, we want something deep. And we know that you've been studying the word and the Torah, and we know that um, we know that is the way. You know, it's like I think God is doing something that is written Amos. Like I will make the people hungry. So it's Him who is doing it. And suddenly we are like, I'm thirsty. Okay, I need to go to find something because. This is not enough, what I've heard, and right. I am thirsty, I'm hungry. Right, and we know that our Christian students know Bible stories. They know and can often quote chapter and verse better than a Jew, okay? But we're, what we do, we say that the Torah exists every, on four levels, okay? And so, with. I don't need to go into the Hebrew part, but the, the basic level is like the simple meaning of the text. What mm -hmm. does it actually say? But there's three levels deeper that we, when Jews study a Bible verse, we don't just study the simple meaning, we're going deeper. Mm -hmm. And um, because and of the Hebrew language, some of it is embedded in the Hebrew, mm -hmm. embedded in the, the meaning of the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's where the juice is, you know, like it's, it's important to know the simple meaning of the text, but that's not, that's like the, like fifth grade level for Jewish students. That's where we start. Um, and then all our adult lives, we go deeper and deeper and deeper into the text. And for anybody who's intellectually alive, spiritually alive, that's where the joy of studying Torah is. So there are a few programs that are happening in the land of Israel for Christians who are actually here in order to introduce them to some of this, the depth and the richness and the beauty of it face to face. So one program is a program that I run once or twice a year called Torah School for the mm -hmm. Nations. And we tend to do it on the Passover holiday and the Sukkot holiday because that's when the nations come. And it's a full day of, of study, but it's, Torah study by, by Orthodox Jewish teachers for people mostly from Christian backgrounds. They have the opportunity to study Torah, so they are, the CJCUC offers in-person Torah study for that population. There have been, uh, it isn't active now, but in the last couple of years, in the Knesset, in the, mm -hmm. the Israeli parliament, we have Torah teachers who are speaking to mostly groups of Christian tourists 
and teaching them words of Torah. Which is amazing because when you're seeing that the Knesset is the place of the government of Israel. Right. So it means that they even know them, that there is a place for them to be a light to the nations. So Rabbi Yehuda Glick, who mm -hmm. was a Knesset member until very recently, is very involved in this. And now that he's not in the Knesset anymore, he's starting a new project. I just want to read you this mm -hmm. quote that, um, that he sent me because he wants to bring um, more attention and we haven't even touched on the books that are being published yet. We'll get to that. But he says, a major part of the redemptive redemption process is Torah to the nations from Zion. Mm -hmm. So, of course, he's referring to this verse from Isaiah and also from my, Micah about Kimitzion Tetzay Torah. And he started something called the Shalom Jerusal Jerusalem Foundation. And he's planning on holding weekly lessons, Torah lessons for the nations, much like CJCUC and the Knesset Bible Study. He says, eventually we intend to establish an annual Jerusalem International Bible Conference, allowing people from all over the world to be exposed to the major Israeli Bible scholars. And then he talks about how this is the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham that all of the families of the earth, meaning the mm -hmm. nations, will be blessed through the Jewish people, through the Torah coming from the hands of the Jewish people. And he is one of the big voices bringing this into fruition. Which is interesting, when you speak about that, it reminds me also, um, this is like the tree of life. This is, again, seed that we're saying of life. It means, like, there is a beautiful passage. Uh, let me try to find it again. It's in Hosea, and there is a passage who speak also about the Torah, and it's very much in agricultural terms. And like there is Yore, again, which is come from Torah, Mora, More, you know, all, all there. And it's like Yore is even the, the, the rain, the first rain. So again, it's like refreshing our soul. It's again the same. It's like we go back to this thirst of the people. And when you have a bit, it's like, I want more. <laughs> Give me more. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's amazing to see that the Jewish people now are discovering what well, there is people who are hungry and right. this is our responsibility to do something. Right. So um, Dennis Prager mm -hmm. is, um, has published many, many books and he, he is working on a translation of the five books of Moses with a, with a sensitivity to and a particular outreach to Christian readers. He started, interestingly enough, he started with the book of Exodus. Genesis has, he's working out of order. Mm -hmm. Genesis was just recently published and he's going to finish the series. But he has a specific introduction because Dennis Prager understands what we're talking about. He's one of the few, like Yehuda Glick, I like to think like myself, not necessarily in the same category, but of people who understand that this is growing and growing and that when, just exactly like what you said, when, when Christians get a taste of Torah the way that Jews have classically learned it over the, the millennia, it's very interesting to them because they know the Bible, but they want to go deeper in their, mm -hmm. own, in their own tradition. Although the Torah does have many specific messages that are just for the Jewish people, there's so much universal wisdom in the Torah. And the people who, the Christians who are beginning to turn to Jewish teachers of Torah and to understand how Jews have always understood the Bible are deepening their own relationship with God, their own relationship with the Bible and so forth. So let me just quickly read this before we think of something else to say. He says, one cannot be a serious Christian without becoming familiar with the Hebrew Bible. Nor can one understand Jesus, a Jew who was not only observant of Torah law, but asserted that he came not to change a jot or a tittle of it. For the many Christians who already believe the Torah embodies the word of God, I hope this commentary strengthens your faith in the Torah. And then he goes on and on. He has more to say. Um, but there are so many books now that that are being published, as I said, specifically for the those that God seems to be awakening something in them and having them understand that the nourishment the, for their mm -hmm. hunger and thirst, as it says mm -hmm. in the book of Amos, is going to come from Zion, from the Jewish people. It is such an exciting time to be a Torah teacher with 
this awareness because I spent most of my adult career as a rabbi's wife and as an educator teaching adult Jewish beginners, people who are born Jewish but didn't have a Torah background. Now there's a whole new audience, but they're asking different questions. They are coming from a different perspective, and it it reinvigorates my own Torah study mm -hmm. and my own uh, my own relationship with this sacred text to share it with people who um, who aren't Jewish. Mm -hmm. So it's at, at, I think the most most exciting thing is that this is the fulfillment of prophecy that God, as you said, is waking up the souls of people in mm -hmm. the Christian world and saying and in the nations. In the nation yeah, as a whole. That's it. Because sometimes we speak about the Christian and he's right. But it's like he's even a bigger picture. And I think we need to see this bigger picture. It's starting with the Christians, mm -hmm. though. I can tell you that the okay. overwhelming mm -hmm. majority. I do have some students who have reached out to me from Muslim countries. But it, it's like 99% people who are either current or former Christians. And it's not... By the way, we may have spoken about this in a previous show, but it's not restricted to Torah study, although we're talking now about the books and the programs and the online uh, mm -hmm. accessibility of, of Torah study, but it's also Shabbat. And it's also th the, the nation's version of kosher, which is eating biblically clean. And it's also a relationship with the land of Israel. All of those things are part of getting us ready for... It's all part of the end of days, mm. all part of Geula, all part of redemption, and everything's kind of realigning. And it's you want to say something? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, the time is already up. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I, uh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. You see, there is so much to learn, and this is wonderful to see this big picture of what God is doing from the land of Israel, Bezak, to touch the nations. There is a big job to do. Yes. There is a big job to do. Rika, thank you again for coming. This is wonderful to hear about all these things. And my dear friends, I hope that you really enjoy this program. Now, if you are interested, you can go on Rivka's website, which is called uh, 10 from the nations.com. There is a list of uh, many beautiful books if you want to know more and study more and be in contact also with Rivka and from Rivka and from me. Bye and see you next week.